Hello, I'm Yvette Torres, and welcome to The Road to Recovery 2013. This episode highlights the many accomplishments of the 2012 National Recovery Month Observance as we look forward to a successful celebration in 2013. Over the past year, millions of Americans have either begun or continued their journey of recovery from mental and or substance use disorders. For many, an important part of this journey is making their voices heard and sharing their stories. While their stories describe their struggles and challenges, they are finding recovery and walking together on pathways to wellness. For many persons in recovery, family, friends, and entire communities are a source of encouragement and support on their journey. For each person in recovery, their commitment and dedication to recovery is worth it, not only for them, but for everyone around them. This is what National Recovery Month is about, celebrating persons in recovery from mental and substance use disorders and extending the benefits of recovery by spreading the message that prevention works, treatment is effective, and people recover. In 2012, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA, observed its 20th anniversary. National Recovery Month is sponsored by SAMHSA and is a resource and tool to help those with behavioral health problems find recovery and a lifetime of hope and wellness. We know that nearly one in 10 Americans struggles with a substance use disorder and that about one in five Americans has a mental health problem. National Recovery Month and all of the activities leading up to the Recovery Month observance in September supports Americans who have achieved long-term recovery. They have realized the benefits of recovery, namely improved relationships, health and well-being, and hope for the future. As we hear their stories, we will learn that while the journey of recovery follows many different pathways, progress on every one of those pathways depends on relationships marked by care, support, and respect. I am uh, Dr. Wesley Clark in the Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And on behalf of SAMHSA, I want to welcome you all here. As you uh, know, traditionally we coordinate the release of our NISDA report with the observance of National Recovery Month or Recovery Month. This year's Recovery Month theme is Join the Voices for Recovery, It's Worth It. And indeed, as we look at some favorable results depicted in the data that we're releasing today, we're making progress. And yet, we must remain vigilant in this endeavor as much still needs to be done to provide quality services to those in need and to promote prevention in America. This is Recovery Month, as you heard. We're especially appreciative of the efforts of everyone in this room and around the country who are interested in the messages of recovery and what recovery means to those with mental and substance use disorders and their families. It's also a month in which, frankly, we go beyond recovery and commit to the wellness of persons in recovery from mental illness or addictions to support the full health and well-being of these individuals, their families, and their communities. And before I discuss the data being released today, I wanted to provide a bit of the perspective of this administration's approach to drug policy. And since my confirmation in 2009, we have repeatedly affirmed that we're not waging a war on drugs. This bumper sticker is totally inappropriate and doesn't uh, it anywhere near reflect the holistic approach that we're using toward this. And that approach is grounded in the firm understanding that addiction is a disease. It's not a moral failing. It can be treated, and as we well know, recovery is possible. My name is Jared Hamry. I am 28 years old and a person in recovery from drug addiction. I just celebrated seven years of not using drugs last week. Thank you. My life growing up was not all that difficult, to be honest. I had loving parents and older siblings. There was really not much drama in my life. One night at a party, without being coaxed or pressured, I misused a prescription pain reliever to get high. Like others, I very quickly became hooked. Literally, I became hooked that night. Within a week, 
I moved to heroin, simply because of the cost. When I started using drugs, I had started a very good career. I was able to maintain being a functional addict for almost two years. But like so many others whose stories I've heard, drugs eventually took over my life. I began missing work, stopped hanging out with friends, I started doing illegal activities and began to feel like a horrible human being. I ruined my family relationships, relationships with significant others dissolved, and friends, well, I really didn't have any. I entered the Phoenix House in Springfield, Mass on September 14, 2005. It was a very difficult time, and to be honest, I hated it. Now looking back, it was the best thing that ever happened, and I would not take it or even my experiences back for anything. I have regained my relationships with my friends and family, and they are stronger than ever. As for a significant other, well, I just celebrated my first wedding anniversary. My name is Benjamin Chin, and I'm a young person in long-term recovery, which for me means I have not used alcohol and drugs in a little over four and a half years. As a result, I've been given the opportunity to live again. I've been able to reconnect with my family, create new and meaningful friendships, pursue a college degree, and experience all the joys and difficulties life has to offer a young adult. I first used marijuana and alcohol at age 13. By the time I was 16, I was a daily user of marijuana, along with alcohol and other drugs. As a result, I've experienced the absence and success of recovery support services. At 15 years old, I was court mandated to my first treatment center, the first of four that I was to attend over the next two years. As a struggling teenager, I experienced firsthand the major gaps in care and support for a young person seeking recovery. There is no youth-focused recovery support upon re-entering my high school, no alternative peer group, no recovery community center, no option to attend a recovery high school, and no sober social activities. My struggle continued for the next two years until at 19, I was sentenced to 30 months of incarceration. It was at that point that I joined the recovery community in 2007. Today, I work with young people in recovery all across the country as a recovery advocate building YPR. We are speaking out and advocating for more youth-focused recovery support services. So today, throughout September and all year round, I challenge all of you to join us in taking action so that one day soon, any young person seeking recovery will have a community ready to accept them and help them reach their maximum potential. Through the SAMHSA's Wellness Initiative, which I'm so very proud to be part of, and the National Wellness Week, we envision a future in which people with mental and substance use disorders pursue optimal health, happiness, recovery, and a full and satisfying life in the community via an access to a range of effective services, supports, and resources. Wellness helps us see ourselves and our, see our recovery as very multidimensional. We can see ourselves through thinking about emotional, financial, social, spiritual, environment, occupational, and intellectual as well as physical aspects of ourselves. Now, why does wellness matter? Well, my brothers and sisters who, like me, are dealing with mental health and substance use challenges are dying decades earlier than the rest of the population due to preventable illness. So this is personal to me. Um, things like diabetes, um, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, these avoidable health conditions are silently killing our loved ones and friends with behavioral challenges because they mistakenly think that our mental and physical health are not linked. But they are wrong. Our mental and physical health is all connected. Wellness can help us live longer lives that are better equipped to handle the stresses of life in recovery. To summarize, recovery is not just about the absence of drug or alcohol use or the absence of mental illness symptoms, but hope and wellness. But please remember that the educational outreach that occurs during Recovery Month about the effectiveness of treatment and the possibility of recovery is a message that we all need to deliver all year long. Thank you. It is an honor to get to host this in the caucus room of the House of Representatives. This is where we today are caucusing to continue the celebration of Recovery Month. I want to uh, present you with something from a person that does understand this issue very well and is incredibly supportive, and that's the National Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month proclamation by the President of the United States. 
Now, therefore, I, Barack Obama, President of the United States, by virtue of the authority invested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim September 2012 as National Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month, and I call upon the people of the United States to observe this month with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities in witness thereof, yada, 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 <laughs> Barack, o Barack Obama, President of the United States. So good afternoon and welcome to everybody at uh, this kickoff for the 2012 National Recovery Month Observance. I think most of you know that SAMHSA is actually celebrating Recovery Month this year and also celebrating its 20th anniversary. So we have a birthday. Thank you. In addition, I want to thank, um, uh, they've already been pointed out, but I just want to thank SAMHSA's team and the Recovery Month planning partners. I think there's over 200 of them at this point, all of you uh, and many more who host hundreds of events each year throughout the country and make such a significant impact in spreading the message of recovery. My name is Don Coyas. I am a member of the Mohican Nation. Our tribe is a clan system, so I was born for the Turtle Clan on my mother's side and my Indian name is Tantanka Wambli. And uh, once again, I'm just really honored to be here. I've been involved with the Recovery Month activities, especially in Native communities. And thanks for the support we've got for that. We have recovery activities every September in Indian country in almost 100 tribes now, or 100 locations. And so um, I don't know what it would be like had we not had that type of organized effort and the support to take it to two places, um, you know, like our communities. Good afternoon, it's great to be here. You know, I was sitting up front smiling because I would have never imagined five years ago that I'd be at this moment kicking off National Recovery Month in 2012. Five years ago, I was basically homeless living on the street with two children and a wife. So I stand here today in front of you as a product of treatment. I'm a product of treatment. I was fortunate enough to go through treatment. And not only am I a product of treatment, but so are my children. So is my family. You know, they say, 25 million people in this country suffer from substance abuse, and 2.5 million will get the help they need. What about the 50 million broken hearts? You can't put a stat on that. You can't put a stat on those kids that we were just talking about who sit home, because they would often say to me, Chris, you made your bed laying it, but my kids didn't make that bed. They had to sleep in it with me every night. So if you have no empathy for the addict on the street, have empathy for the for the family that's behind them. So again, it is my honor to be here. I never thought I'd be on Capitol Hill speaking, that's for sure. But it's amazing what one day at a time and 12 steps can do for a human being. So thank you. Each year, Thousands of people in cities and towns across the country help to organize Recovery Month events. Recovery Month events bring together the courageous people in recovery, their family and friends, and the caring service providers that work tirelessly to support people in recovery. In 2012, the efforts of thousands of individuals throughout the country produced more than 1,100 events nationwide supporting the theme, join the voices for recovery, it's worth it. Recovery Month events confirm that we are making great progress in building strong and healthy recovery communities. At these events, we hear encouraging words and calls for action to support people in recovery throughout the year with housing, education, and employment. Recovery Month events make the faces of recovery visible in the community, highlighting the fact that people in recovery are our friends, our family, and neighbors. 
We have seen rallies, jamborees, block parties, sporting events, motorcycle rides, community walks, wellness activities, dances, and art shows among the events listed on the Recovery Month website. We want to thank the thousands of people responsible for organizing Recovery Month events. Your creativity and dedication is inspiring. We're in Providence uh, by the Roger Williams Park and uh, we've got Rally for Recovery Day. And uh, there's about 5,000 people here. People from the recovery field and mental health, substance abuse, and de developmental disabilities. We're the only state that does that. We had just about every elected official you can imagine that was here. That doesn't happen in most states. It's amazing to think that each year this gets bigger and better. And we need to bring more and more attention to it uh, because as we do that, I think we can all do a better job of helping uh, through the process of recovery. And it's amazing. With the blink of an eye, you finally see the light. I am so thrilled. We've had things we've never done before. And, uh, and just people are having a ball. People are coming up to us and just saying thank you, thank you. What this does is it brings it right out into the open and says, you know, we're, we're people like everyone else. Recovery is something that should be celebrated and it can be a very lonely road, recovery. So the more it can be celebrated, the less lonely a road it is. I think it's extremely important that we brought this event out into the public, out into the, uh, the capital city to say to all, of the, all of the citizens of Rhode Island that these individuals matter, recovery matters to them, it, it matters to their family, it matters to this community of Providence, and it matters to the community of Rhode Island. Well next year, this is really exciting, uh, Providence has been selected to be the 2013 uh, National Hub event for Rally for Recovery. And that means that not only are we going to be the we're going to be sort of the core of all the recovery activities that will be taking place next year. So uh, all eyes will be on Rhode Island. Well, we've been celebrating here all day and then tonight um, what we do is we have actually uh, what we call the luminarias and that's where people have uh, candles. And there's, a, there's a procession down Canal Street uh, and we have the actual torches that light the water fires. And what we're going to do is we're going to light torches, 100 torches for recovery will surround the basin in Water Place Park. And then the luminarias represent uh, people who have been either lost to recovery, uh, lost to addiction, or people who haven't been able to find recovery yet. So it's really a very moving ceremony tonight that we're leading up to. My role tonight is I'm going to be one of 15 people lighting a torch for uh, the water fire celebration and I'm very honored to be able to do that. It's, it's very emotional because um, I think there isn't a person here who hasn't been touched by mental illness either directly in their immediate family or extension of the family. We believe that uh, recovery is a celebration. It's something that should be celebrated, not just by the individual, by the whole family and by the whole community. Because when a person recovers, the family gets better, the community gets better, and that's good for everybody. We know recovery heals families. We need to stand up, stand out, and speak up. I want to encourage you to let your voice be heard. Advocates for Recovery does that, but I want to remind you that we need all of you. Here we are at our 10th annual rally. Recovery Month is here to celebrate the millions of people who have found recovery and are now living productive and rewarding lives. Now therefore, I, Barack Obama, President of the United States of America, hereby proclaim September 2012 as National Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month. John Hickenlooper, Governor of the State of Colorado, do hereby proclaim September 2012 to be Recovery Month. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Michael B. Hancock of the City and County of Denver, Colorado, do hereby officially proclaim September 2012 to be known as National Recovery Month. When I look around here, I see people I know who I am familiar with the story of their recovery, and they're amazing. 
just for today, I am able to be free of my addiction and be who and what I want to be. I never said that it would be easy. I only said that it would be worth it. I want to say in a loud and thankful voice, I am blessed. I am truly blessed. Say yes to our recovery. Embrace it daily. I actually teach around the nation now and remind law enforcement that recovery does happen and that they can be a catalyst to changing the lives of so many people. So I tell cops, when you do make an arrest, remember it's an opportunity to change the life for a positive. And if people are struggling with addiction, then this could be the opportunity to change their life. So treat them right. This is a celebration. It's a celebration. So I think you should all stand up and give yourself a standing ovation. We all collectively make a difference. Mental health and substance use and abuse is a winnable battle. But if you continue to do the right thing, one day after the next, one month after the next, one year after the next, it comes a time when people see what you do and not what you did. I promise you that's the truth. For me, recovery has been about discovery and continues to be. This is my 23rd year of blissful education in recovery. And I wish y'all all the best, much love, much success. You got it coming. The stories of recovery are the stories of our family members, our friends, and the people we meet every day in our communities. As they succeed in living self-directed lives and achieving their full potential, we see the benefits of recovery, not only for the individual, but their family, friends, and community. In America, we have the opportunity to work together to promote hope, health, and healing. 
we see people from all walks of life engaged in the recovery process as a person in recovery or as someone reaching out to help others. The recovery movement reflects the wonderful diversity in America and the compassionate spirit that is America at her best. People in recovery have reclaimed their lives and are now giving back. They have jobs, pay taxes, raise families, and volunteer in their communities, giving back every day. More and more, we see that prevention works, treatment is effective, and people can and do recover. As we take a moment to recognize the successes of the 2012 Recovery Month observance, we are reminded that it is time to turn our attention to this year. This year's Recovery Month theme is Join the Voices for Recovery Together on Pathways to Wellness. I hope this show inspires you to get involved and to organize a Recovery Month event for this September. You can begin now by going to the Recovery Month website at recoverymonth.gov for information on how to get started. As you can see from the events in 2012, the type of Recovery Month event you choose to organize can be whatever your imagination and creativity inspires you to do. Whatever type of event you choose to organize, you will be bringing a sense of hope that people in recovery can live healthy, happy, and productive lives. Thank you for everything you do to support recovery. Let's keep up this exciting work in the coming year, and I sincerely hope that your event will be highlighted in our 2013 Showcase of Events. For a copy of this program or other programs in the Road to Recovery series, call SAMHSA at 1-800-662-HELP or order online at recoverymonth.gov and click on the Video Radio Web tab. Every September, National Recovery Month provides an opportunity for communities like yours to raise awareness of substance use and mental health problems, to highlight the effectiveness of treatment, and that people can and do recover. In order to help you plan events and activities in commemoration of this year's Recovery Month observance, the free online Recovery Month kit offers ideas, materials, and tools for planning, organizing, and realizing an event or outreach campaign that matches your goals and resources. To obtain an electronic copy of this year's Recovery Month kit and gain access to other free publications and materials related to recovery issues, visit the Recovery Month website at www.recoverymonth.gov or call 1-800-662-HELP.